What's up guys? So I saw someone asking on a Facebook group recently, what's a better first pet, a hognose snake or a corn snake? And quite frankly, the best first pet is the one that you research and are interested in. So, I mean, I always like to tell people if you want to do all the work and all the research, you can keep something like a carpet python for your first snake. Just know that um, there are definitely more forgiving snakes out there. I kind of wanted to show you a comparison between corn snakes and hognose snakes. They're really different snakes. Um, honestly, corn snakes are much easier to keep, much easier to feed much easier to clean and just have much better attitudes as far as handling goes. So I just want to show you a quick comparison of my hognose snake versus my corn snakes. So right here is the rack that I keep my hognose snakes in and they are in 15 quart tubs. Some bigger females can be kept in the larger tub but it's nice that you don't need any enclosure any bigger than this. Um, same goes with corn snakes. They fit in about the same tub size but I mean sometimes I like to get them in the bigger V70s just because but let's take a look at these guys so you open up the enclosure and she's already hissing at me they aren't very bitey but they do like to act like they're gonna bite you and I mean sometimes they can have some pretty big feeding responses this is definitely a snake that would rather be left alone so as you can see, she's coming up to me. She'll come up to me to try to see if I have food and stuff like that. A pretty kind of interactive snake as far as that goes. And they're very eyesight driven. So you can see here when they see me walking around, they'll watch you and stuff like that. For the most part, she's not going to bite me. She's just doing that just to scare me off. So you don't have to do it this way, but I like to hook her first just to have her calm down and get her out of the tub. And then once she's out of the tub, I just grab her. And as you can see, she calms right down right when I get her out. But, I mean, quite frankly, these are not, not the best handling snakes. They're not snakes that like to be handled. They're also very, very clumsy snakes, very slow moving. So this right here is actually a breeding size female. Um, females can get a little bit bigger than this, but for the most part, this is what you're looking at. I mean, they can be a little bit weird as far as when you put them in an enclosure that's too big, some of them may stop feeding. They can definitely be a little temperamental as far as that goes. So you definitely want to make sure that you keep them correctly. Um, just listen to them, but for feeding, you're actually going to feed them a lot more than a lot of your other snakes. Um, I'm feeding this girl every two to three days. You feed them a lot and they go to the bathroom a lot, which can be a little bit of a pain. Um, much different than maybe a corn steak. Even when you're a few months in with a corn snake, you start feeding them once a week. And then uh, as adults, you can feed them probably every two weeks if you're doing decent sized meals. So quite frankly, it is a lot easier. And then as far as handling, you always got to consider that these guys are rear fang venomous. Their venom is not potent and it's also hard for them to get those rear fangs on you. If I could compare their venom to anything else, it'd probably be more of a bee sting, but just like bee stings, people can have bad reactions to these kinds of bites. They're also very, very unathletic, so you need to keep that in mind when you're putting water bowls in there. If they're too big for a smaller snake, they may not find their water, as well as um, I've even heard of them drowning in their water bowl, which, I mean, seems a little unlikely, but I mean, it could definitely happen. And then as far as food, sometimes they can't even find their food. So you got to kind of put the food up to them and wait for them to grab it. But quite frankly, sometimes when you go too fast, they get unhappy about it and they start hissing and, you know, doing that fake strike and everything to their food and they get too worked up to eat. So, I mean, it's definitely a delicate process. Once you get them eating, they're pretty good. You can also take them off and they don't want to eat. Here is my male hog nose. He is a bit smaller. Um, the males are usually much smaller than the females as far as these go. And he's just like her as far as he will come in when you first come in, start hissing and striking at you. Um, he doesn't really tame down, so he'll keep on doing that as you handle him. So I don't really take him out too much. I just respect the fact that they don't want to be handled and uh, just let him be pretty much. Now I'd like to mention that all snakes have different personalities. 
Um, so it's kind of a general idea that all hognos are like that. Um, most of them do show those natural instincts, but some of them are very, very tame. Either way, I don't think they're a great handable animal. Um, all those things considered, I don't think they're a great first snake. I don't think they're a great pet if you're looking for something to uh, hang out with or anything like that. They mostly want to be left alone. Now corn snakes are going to be pretty different. Um, there is a range of personalities when it comes to them, but for the most part, they're very, very good temperamentally, as well as uh, the enclosure size is manageable, pretty close to the hog nose. Obviously the hog nose are a little bit smaller and they like smaller spaces than the corn snakes. The corn snakes will move around. Um, if you want something that's always going to be out and moving around, they're also a good snake to keep. And uh, so I'll get a few, um, all different life stages, all different personalities and I'll show you uh, the corn snake. So this rack is all my um, yearling, the six month old. And as you can see, there's not really any reaction here when I go to pick them up. Um, they can be small and they can be a little squeamish sometimes, but a lot of these guys are really, really tame. Really, really cool. Um, they don't move around too much, so they're easily handable for kids. But when they are a little bit smaller, they can be a little bit harder to manage. And then also, they can be a little bit more bitey. I mean, there are a lot that are really cool, but take this one for instance, which is one that I hatched out this year. Um, well, it was bitey yesterday, but now she wants to be nice. But they do start out very small and um, can be hard for little kids to handle stuff like that. But usually, honestly, when you when they know that they're overpowered, they kind of submit and then result to, you know, running away more so than biting. And then also to consider is that corn snakes come in a lot um, more color and pattern mutations than hognose do at this point. And hognose do have a lot of cool colors and different patterns and stuff like that but they tend to be much more expensive. So you can get all the corn snakes I'm showing you right now for, you know, probably all under $150 and most of them much, um, you know, much lower than that. But as you can see, like this guy, he wants to just run away and you know, some are like that, but for the most part, they're not biting you or anything like that. Here's another baby I produced this year. Um, like most other snakes, when they're babies, they are a little bit more skittish, a little bit more defensive, just because they're small little guys and quite frankly, they can be picked off in the wild pretty easily by predators. So it's just their instincts stay out of people's way and stay out of uh, sight of predators and stuff like that. All right, so now that we've seen a bunch of different baby corn snakes, let's look at the adults and see what we're working with as far as the enclosure size and the temperament. So a lot of my adult corn snakes I keep in V70 tubs, which is uh, probably a little bit of overkill. Most keepers keep them in the smaller 35 quart tubs, which I have some of those snakes in my other rack in. But um, this boy right here, he's a 14 year old male. So I mean this is as big as a male is going to get. Um, looks kind of big when I put him out like this but I mean honestly this is a very very manageable snake and quite frankly very very docile and easy to handle snake. Um, the bigger they get pretty much the less they move around and more handleable they get. Now here's the girl that bred this year and so she may look a little bit smaller than uh, than our male there, but as you can see, just as docile as she could be. Um, a lot of people say, you know, should I get a male or should I get a female? If you plan on breeding in the future, always start with females or just start with a female. If you decide later in the future to breed, you know, you have an animal that's already full grown and, you know, more so ready to go and you can get a male and grow them up a little bit quicker than you can the female. Um, I'd rather have my females older than younger when breeding. But um, at the end of the day, you don't need to breed anything. I mean, just keeping them is very cool. Very, very docile, very good pets. Um, an animal that you can take out and let them roam around and you can handle. Um, just like any other snake, they don't enjoy being handled, but 
they will tolerate being handled. So that's always something to keep in mind. Sometimes I hear people say, um, you know, I just don't have time for my animal anymore. I can't handle it every day and all that other stuff. Well, quite frankly, your snake doesn't want you to handle it every day. Um, handling often brings stress, but for the most part, there's certain animals that handle stress better than others, and coarse snakes are definitely one of those animals. I think it's also important to mention that there's a lot of cool kink snakes that act, you know, very much like a corn snake would. You keep them the same way, they get about the same size. Um, this here is an adult male Mexican black kink snake. Um, things like cow kings and Mexican black kink snakes are very very good pets and you keep them pretty much the same way you keep corn snakes so you can keep them in the same rack at the same temperature and pretty much feeding the same meals and stuff like that and they breed pretty much the same so it's another animal that you can keep in mind when looking for a first snake now there's a lot of things to consider when trying to get a pet snake or deciding between two snakes and it all depends on the person and like I said if you do the research then, I mean, you should be able to keep anything. You're still gonna run into snags no matter what kind of snake you get. Things can always go wrong. These are living animals. Um, nothing's perfect, whether it's in nature or in captivity. Things go wrong, but, but it can be a lot easier if you have something that is very flexible and willing to adjust to those changes with you. Um, you can keep corn snakes all different kinds of ways and they seem to do great so many different ways. If you guys have any questions, please ask. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and if you made it this far, you're on the team.